Shad Malone here from Capital MMA and Elite Fitness. Uh, here with Eli Knight, our, our guest instructor for the day. We're gonna hit a seminar right after this. Uh, second degree Voice Gracie Black Belt here. Um, we got a few takedown transitions and counters and counters to those counters and counters to those counters to counters <laughs> that we're gonna cover here. Um, the first one we're gonna start off leading when my partner throws a cross. So we're already in the situation, see he's just eager to punch me. <laughs> so we're already in the situation where we identify this as a fight. So I don't want to sit at the end of his punches. I want to close that distance and get to a spot where I'm working to take him, bringing him where I want to go. So as soon as I see him set up that strike, I'm immediately lowering my level. So the, the level change, let's hit that level change one more time. That level change happens. As soon as he loads it up, I'm lowering my level here, closing the distance with my back leg here so that I can make this connection. We're gonna pivot a bit here for you. So when I make this connection, the most important part is my head control, my head positioning. So I'm driving, looking up towards his far shoulder, and I'm keeping my back straight so my hips are loaded. My top hand here, I can control the hip. My bottom left hand here, I'm going towards his knee, just cupping it here. All right, now the takedown happens simple from here. If everything goes out smooth, I'm changing my angle, I'm going in this direction now. So I'm lifting the leg, I'm cutting here, but my head is what's bringing him down. I'm gonna turn my hips, I'm gonna run across my partner so that I bring him down to the mat nice and easy here. If everything works out right, my knee is right next to his hip, my hand is on the other side of the hip, and I can immediately transition to a nice control position there. All right, so that's if everything goes well that double leg goes down right smoothly. So everything doesn't go well. I shoot in for that double here. And maybe the athletic, he turns the angle a little bit. So I'm not gonna make both legs happen. So that's when I'm gonna switch off to a single leg here. All right, so I shoot in for the double. I end up with the single. My back is straight, so my butt has to stay low. Head position is still very important. I like to take my top hand, hug the hip, bottom hand, goes towards the heel here. Now this transition has to go pretty fast. So here I'm gonna shelf the leg on top of my thigh. So he shouldn't be able to bring that back down off of my, off of my thigh there. My back hand is gonna to come towards the hip and I'm just gonna to look towards my partner. Comes down, if I continue to control this leg, that sets me up for a nice transition to knee on belly there. All right? So you were talking about like if everything goes well on the double, you got the double. If not, you transition the single. And you said you gotta do that pretty quick. You gotta you can't go. like linger in the single leg, right? So if he's if he gets if he transitions that single here like this, the reason he can't linger is because I got some good stuff I can do for counters off of this. So um, something I can do, it depends on kind of my leg placement. My leg can be on the inside, on the outside, on the outside over here. So if let's try this way here. <laughs> So right now it's on the inside here, so I have to kind of make considerations for that. So from here, if his head is on the inside in front of my stomach and my leg is between his legs here, if I can reach underneath and I can grab this, I like to, to try to reach this if I can. And this hand is already kind of over him because he gave me the head placement on the inside. So if I reach over toward this lat right here, and if I got some gi, then that's great, but we're talking about a punching consideration, so I'll probably say wrist and lat rather than sleeve and gi here. But it goes either way, so if I'm like this, this foot here, I'm gonna to try to turn and pivot and uh, turn my toes inside and do kind of a pistol squat and then pull him over me this way. So I turn it into like a sumigai kind of throw from judo. And then from here this way, since this leg is underneath, I can use that to kind of pull him back this way here. That opens him up so he's not already turning the face at me, getting knees and elbows in the way and all that. Right. Now, um, if the leg placement wound up on a different, different area, so rather, you know, maybe I was able to defend this way here, Right? That might be good too. And the problem is too, like his head has to be inside for me to make that throw there. If he already starts to transition to the outside, he's probably already snapping down. But if I can still maintain my balance a little bit, maybe I can get through here like this. Now this is even better because I had this like kind of Kimura grip set up like this. So if that's the case here, then whenever I sit down, I'm gonna use this to kick over again. And to kick here this way, and then roll them out. So now I have this Timur right here. I can just transition off like this. Maybe I can come over to the top position and finish the Timur from the top. Or if I don't win that scramble and he starts to already turn back up and face me here like this, yeah, that's the only way he can really go. But if that's the case here, is he's starting to turn and scramble up like that, I can use this to try to transition to his back here too. So you know, those are a couple of things that if he's lingering and hanging on to that single leg too long, I can transition and do that. 
So I would say the three most important things that, to consider when executing and following through to finish that takedown is one, the level change. I have to change the level so that I can close that gap. Once I close that gap, I need to think about my head position. Whether it's inside or outside, it depends on the circumstance. With my head position, I should always have my head up so I can drive through it. So I want my head to be here, my spine to be straight, hips low. The third thing is you gotta transition. If you ever watch really good wrestlers, this always from one move to the next move to the next. You can't hit that double, switch to the single, and hang out there. I have to make a decision and go somewhere with it. Those are my three big tips for executing that finish. Yeah, any any single one of those that like he's messing up on, and that if they're not continuously chained back to back, and the timing is off, that gives me an opportunity to capitalize on that, and then I can look to counter some kind of different way. So we're both kind of riding that same kind of wave of timing, and it's whoever makes the first mistake during that whole process that's who's going to win that that moment in time. So that's that's a big thing to consider, man. So Chad, I appreciate you having me yeah, out. Man. Thanks for coming. Look forward to the seminar. Don't forget like, share, subscribe, and turn on notifications. <laughs> <laughs> See y'all next time.